Hello everyone and welcome to the long-awaited report regarding the endeavors of Hans Niemann. It was published by Chess.com uh, yesterday. I think they published it uh, not by themselves. They've uh, given it to uh, like The Guardian or, or some other portals. But today they have published their findings um, uh, via their personal account on Twitter. So I will share that with you. It will be the first link you will uh, see in the description below. It contains 72 pages regarding uh, Hans Niemann and uh, his play over the board uh, and uh, online and in comparison to the other to the other players and uh, a lot of interesting uh, stuff is in here so uh, if you want to go through it uh, through everything you will be able to it's in the description below i will just quickly go over it to give you an, a general idea of what the, their findings were so it says chess.com's current research and findings uh, october 22 over the last few weeks the world's been uh, following the major story regarding hans niemann magnus carlsen and cheating in chess this has become a matter of sig a significant public interest both inside and outside the chess world and we present in this report our exploration of the event circumstances and the data that have informed chess.com's decision uh, concerning the co current controversy as well as the issue of cheating in chess more generally at the outset we want to make clear that while these events highlight a critical topic in chess cheating the vast majority of chess games do not involve any cheating we estimate that fewer than 0.14 percent of players on chess.com ever cheat and that our events are by f uh, are by and large free from cheating we firmly believe that cheating uh, in chess is rare uh, preventable and much less uh, pervasive uh, than is currently being portrayed trade in the media. With that background, the following is a brief summary of our findings uh, and takeaways on 72 pages. So basically, this is uh, their um, conclusion in short, you can read this, uh, and then we're going to go through the 72 pages, but uh, fairly quickly. So we present evidence in this report that Hans likely cheated online much more than his public statements uh, suggest. However, while Hans has uh, had a record setting and remarkable rise in rating and strength, in our view, there is uh, a lack of concrete statistical evidence that he cheated in his game with Magnus or in any other over-the-board game, uh, in-person games. We are presenting our findings here and will cooperate with FIDE on any further investigation. So basically, they've said that... Um, uh, well, it, it's pretty clear the, the game against Magnus is legit, other over-the-board games are legit, and uh, it would seem that uh, uh, while uh, he did cheat and he admitted to cheating, he cheated uh, in many more games that, uh, th than was previously thought. Uh, we were never uh, pressured by Magnus or his team whatsoever to remove Hans from Chess.com or revoke his invitation to the Chess.com Global Championship, nor did we communicate with Magnus regarding our decision on these issues before we made them. In fact, Magnus did not even know we were going to remove Hans until Hans went public with our private correspondence. Uh, we uninvited Hans from our upcoming major online events and revoked his access to our site based on our experience with him in the past. Growing suspicions among top players and our team about his rapid rise of play, the strange circumstances and explanations of his win over Magnus as well as Magnus's unprecedented withdrawal. Uh, in order to have more time to investigate the over the board situation and our own internal concerns, we uninvited Hans uh, from our events and prevented his access to chess.com. We are open to continuing a dialogue with Hans to discuss his status on chess.com. Uh, we believe that chess organizers, federations, companies, and players can all work together more effectively to create great and surely fair uh, chess events. So here you can read about the, the mission of chess.com, what, what they strive to do, what they, what they stand for. And then you have a timeline of events uh, that we are interested in. So September 4, 2022, Magnus Carlsen having the white pieces and Hans Niemann having the black pieces play a game at the Singfeld Cup in St. Louis in which Hans wins. And Hans gives a post-game uh, interview. September 5th, uh, the day after, uh, Magnus tweets his withdrawal from the event, linking to a video clip in which a soccer manager can be heard saying, I prefer really not to speak. If I speak, I'm in big trouble. The uh, the Mourinho one. Chess.com emails Hans privately to let him know that his account has been discreetly closed and his invitation to the uh, chess.com global championship has been withdrawn a copy of this email is attached as exhibit a it has historically been uh, chess.com's general policy to handle account suspensions closures and invitations for title players such as hans uh, in a non-public matter uh, uh, the, the a list of exhibits will be at the end of this document if you ever go through it so september 6th uh, hans publicly addresses his ban on chess.com stating that although he cheated a few years ago when he was 12 and 16 years old he has never cheated in a tournament 
spent with prize money when I was streaming or in a real game. September 8th, 2022, Chess.com sends Hans a letter personally laying out the reasons for the decisions to revoke his status on Chess.com and to disinvite him to the Chess.com Global Championship, of which uh, a copy of which is attached as Exhibit B. Chess.com responds to Hans' public comments via tweet below uh, in image one. We've already uh, had this on the channel, but for those of you who are maybe new to this, dear chess community, the last few days have been uh, tumultuous for many in the chess community. At this time, we have reached out to Hans Demon to explain our decision to privately remove him from chess.com and our events. We have shared detailed evidence with him concerning our decision, including information that contradicts his statements regarding the amount of seriousness of his cheating on chess.com. We have invited Hans to provide an explanation and response with the hope of finding a resolution uh, where Hans can again participate on chess.com. We want nothing more than to see the best chess players in the world succeed in the greatest events. We will always act to protect the integrity of the game that we all love. Signed, Danny Ranch, uh, Chief Chess Officer. And then you have September uh, 27th, Magnus releases a public statement explaining his unprecedented, uh, unprecedented pro professional decision to withdraw from the Singfield Cup. He indicates that he believes uh, that Neiman has cheated more and more recently than he has publicly admitted. Uh, then you have uh, the, their uh, basis of decision to remove Hans from chess.com and withdraw his chess.com uh, global uh, championship. Uh, uh, you, you can read that. Uh, uh, does chess.com believe that Hans cheated in his September 4th over the board game against Magnus Carlsen in the Singfield Cup? And more generally, do we believe Hans has cheated in other over the board games? And here it says, despite the public speculation on these, uh, these questions, in our view, there is no direct evidence that proves Hans cheated uh, at the September 4th, uh, 2020. 22 game with Magnus or proves that he has cheated in other over the board games. Uh, that said, uh, as set forth uh, more fully below in section X, we believe certain aspects of the September 4 game were suspicious and Hans's explanation of his win post event uh, added to our suspicion. As to his over the board play more generally, in section 7 below we discuss what we believe are apparent anomalies in Hans's rise in over the board rating. Of note, we discuss how Hans became the fastest, ri fastest rising top player in classical over the board chess in modern recorded history much later in life than his peers and did it after uh, we had removed him from our playing um, playing on our site in 2020. Despite these potential suspicions, as shown below in section 8, uh, our in-depth review of Hans's over-the-board games using chess.com statistical methods uh, revealed aggregate patterns of play that, while interesting, are possible for a rising player approaching 2700. In section 9, we present Hans's top performing events based uh, on his overperformance in strength and rating. We are prepared to cooperate with FIDE and respect their role in leading this and any future over the board investigations. Uh, then it says, if chess.com was not certain that Hans cheated at the Singfield Cup, why did they take steps to revoke his invitation to the CGC and close his chess.com account in the wake of his match with Magnus? And then they said, uh, oh, of course, we based this decision on several factors. First, as detailed in this report, Hans admitted to cheating in chess games on our site as recently as 2020 after our cheating detection software and team uncovered suspicious plays. Second, we had suspicions about Hans's play against Magnus at the Singfield Cup, which were intensified by the public fallout from the event. Third, we had concerns about uh, the step, uh, the steep inconsistent rise in Hans's rank uh, set out in section 7 of this report. Like others in the broader chess community, finally we faced a critical decision point uh, at an unfortunate time. Could we ensure the integrity of the CGC, which was scheduled to start a few days after the Singfield Cup on September 14, 2022, for all participants if Hans took part in the event? Uh, they uh, concluded that it, it was not possible and then uh, he was uh, uninvited. So, okay, you can read a bit more about that yourself, but I'm more interested in the in, in the cheating part. Hans cheating on, on chess.com. Uh, consistent with the letter uh, we sent Hans privately on September 8th, we are prepared to show within this report that he, in fact, appears to have cheated again multiple opponents in chess.com prize events beyond the title Tuesday events that Hans admitted to having cheated in when he was 12. Speed Chess Championship qualifiers and the Pro Chess League. We also have evidence that uh, he appears to have cheated in sets of rated games on chess.com against highly rated well-known figures uh, in the chess community, some of which he streamed online. These findings contradict uh, uh, Hans's public statements. Uh, in particular, uh, in the interview that Hans has given in the 2022 Singfield Cup, uh, he gave uh, several comments to the press about alleged instances of prior cheating. Other than 
uh, when I was 12 years old. I have never, ever, ever, and I would never do that. Uh, that is the worst thing that I could ever do. Cheat in a tournament with prize money. Never when I was streaming did I cheat. And keep in mind that I was 16 years old. Uh, I never wanted to hurt anyone. These were random games. I would never... Uh, could even fathom doing it in a real game. As discussed in more detail below, we, dis we disagree with these statements. As chess.com, the fair play team uh, is a sophisticated internal analytical team uh, that assesses potential cheating cases on our platform. Common types of cheating examples range from every move is an engine move, where every move played was the top uh, move recommended by the engine, to we don't have enough evidence to uh, close uh, where, where, where the player's moves are usual unusually sophisticated, but still within realistic bounds of statistical probability, we have gathered detailed uh, evidence on Hans's play and have determined uh, through extensive review of that evidence that there were numerous games where Hans's gameplay fell along this spectrum, strongly suggesting that he violated our fair play regulations. Now, uh, do with that information what you will. Uh, here are some of the events that um, uh, he supposedly cheated in uh, so, some like title Tuesday qualifiers for the uh, for something pro chess league in the games against Narditsky in the in the Grand, Grand Prix title Tuesday blitz uh, games against Krikor games against Paravian against uh, Yanni Pomnish against Terman uh, private match versus Benjamin Bok uh, then again uh, in 2020 you can see in the in the title Tuesday blitz so overall we have found that Hans has likely cheated in more than 100 online games including several prize money events he was already 17 when he likely cheated in some of these matches and games he was also streaming in 25 of this game of these games so it says uh, while his performance in some of these matches may seem to be within the realm of some statistical possibility the probability of any single player performing this well across uh, this many games is incredibly low now what i find interesting is that um, uh, the, the 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 evidence that uh, that is um, that well that they come up with is that uh, basically this the probability of any single player performing this well across uh, this many games is incredibly low which means that if uh, ever in the future uh, a, a player is born that has this ability uh, it will be considered impossible now uh, i don't know as the, i mean none of this is concrete evidence is just a you know the probability of him playing this well is very unlikely so i don't know again do, do with it what you will uh, so, okay, then uh, you have some private uh, uh, conversation between Danny Range and Hans Niemann regarding all, uh, all of this. You can read that yourself. Uh, then you have how cheat detection works. You can also, uh, I, I'm just going to read the, the basic concept of cheat detection is basically uh, comparing the moves made to an engine recommended move, removing some moves, opening some endgame, because uh, of course those are not cheating. Uh, you can learn the openings, you can learn the endgame. Focusing on key critical moves, discussing with a panel of trained analysts and strong players, comparing players, uh, past performance and no strength profile, uh, comparing a player's performance to performance of uh, comparable peers, looking at the statistical significance of the results, looking uh, at if uh, there are behavioral factors at play, and re reviewing time usage when compared to difficulty of the moves uh, on the board. Now, this is also something that uh, I, uh, uh, like, imagine if someone is actually really strong, like as, as Hans is appearing to be, uh, and his games and moves are reviewed by players who are not as strong then uh, of course they, they, their idea would be that it is impossible to play such moves um, uh, so fast so I don't know uh, well I'm sure very capable people uh, have done this analysis uh, you know I, I as a you know just uh, someone who enjoys chess I don't know uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not convinced uh, so chess.com employs highly rated and uh, a grandmaster fair play analyst precisely because there are many situations where humans are required to understand how human versus computer a move would actually is a move actually is human chess and computer chess are different even at the highest levels the best humans play at an elo rating uh, of 2800 stockfish the most powerful chess engine has an estimated rating of more than 3500 so there is quite uh, quite the difference in a theoretical match between world champion magnus carlsen uh, versus stockfish we estimate that it is most likely that magnus carlsen would lose every single game no wins and no draws okay no one is doubting that uh Okay, so here you can uh, read about their uh, best in class cheat uh, detection and selective cheating. Uh, you can read that on your own. Uh, the, uh, here are some of the 
uh, when, when he admitted, admitted to cheating on Chesdal Cup in 2020, Hans had an international master title with at least one Grandmaster Norm, and the performance that ultimately led to the action of having his account closed was benchmarked with a strength score of 85.50. Uh, uh, strength score is something that they give to a player, uh, well, ba basically, uh, depending on how strong he plays, uh, like Magnus would have. Okay, but we're, we're going to discuss that later on as the, the strength scores are... Uh, nicely shown between other players as well. Then you have Hans's over-the-board rise. Outside his online play, Hans is the fastest rising top player in classical over-the-board chess in modern history. With each new generation of players, there is a small group who will eventually emerge at the top as the top players. Some of the big names in the current generation are Alireza Firuja, Vincent Keimer, Arjun Ergaisi. Looking purely at rating, Hans should be classified as a member of this group uh, of top young players. While we do not doubt that Hans is a talented player, we note that his results are statistically extraordinary. Now, the increase in strength, uh, there you can see that this is the, the strength rating uh, over, over the course of the years. For example, here, uh, they've um, uh, put it from the beginning of 2014 to the end of 2022. Uh, then you can see Hans Niemann uh, uh, has made the, the absolute biggest progress from 2014 uh, to the end of 2022 uh, from a score strength score of 67.7 to 90. Uh, which is a yearly gain of 2.66, whereas Vincent Keimer, who is second here, made uh, from uh, 72 in 2014 to 91 in 2022. So his uh, weighted yearly gain is 2.22, some 0.4 points uh, uh, below Hans Niemann. But then you have Domaraju Gukesh, uh, also below Vincent Keimer, some 0.2 points uh, behind him, then uh, Prag Pragnananda, then Alireza Firuja and Arjun Eregaisi. So those are the uh, young players that are basically uh, running the chess world now. Then you have Abdul Satarov, Nikhil Sarin, uh, Deak, uh, Jeffrey Xiong, Jordan Van Forest, and Andrei Yesipenko. Uh, the, the difference in their their strength from 2014 to 2022. For example, you see uh, Andrei Yesipenko has an 84 at the start of 2014 and an 88 um, at the end of uh, 2022. So he did not make, uh, he made progress, but it was not as big. He was already incredibly strong in 2014. Unlike, for example, Hans, who had a score of 67 and then at the end of 2022, a score of 90. Uh, but okay, uh, then we have some, uh, okay, here you have something. Uh, uh, also, you can see, uh, no, that's not the one I want to show you. Uh, nor this, nor this, nor this. You can check that out by yourself. Um, the, the ages of the grandmasters as set uh, forth in a table for another key data uh, point that informed our analyst is the fact that there are 13 players currently ranked uh, in the world's top 50 players who are younger than 25. Hans is the only player who became a grandmaster at the age of 17. The other 12 players all, all achieved the... Um, uh, the title between the ages of 12 and 16. So, as you can see, Hans could be a, a, a late bloomer. Uh, Hans's over-the-board data analysis. While Chess.com's cheat detection is tuned to catch cheating in our uh, faster online time controls, we started uh, off Hans's over-the-board play using the same statistical tools and compared him to his peers. Given his outstanding rise in strength and rating, we considered several questions um, uh, and examined the relevant data with the intention to investigate whether Hans has cheated over the board. How does Hans' strength over the board compare to other players? And this is also very, very interesting to me. We analyzed all over the board games uh, played by these players against 2500 plus rated uh, opponents, so anyone who is above Grandmaster level, uh, since the start of 2022 and calculated their overall strength score. Hans is ranked number 6 of 13, so somewhere in the middle, nothing spectacular. Uh, as is shown uh, in figure H, this puts him roughly in the middle of a somewhat tight band of strength scores, which is not on its own uh, noteworthy. Uh, you can see uh, his, yeah, the, the the blue one is Hans, for example. The the highest one uh, has a Nihal Sarin, even even higher than than Magnus Carlsen. Uh, does Hans have an unusually uh, shaped plot of games based on strength score? A player who plays differently at the different times uh, might show two separate distributions of game strength, which might look more like two lumps, uh, not an even distribution. Hans' distribution graph looks similar to those of his peers with a fairly simple and apparently unimodal distribution. Uh, these graphs are contained in uh, Appendix 10.1 um, uh, or X.1. It will be uh, uh, later shown. Was Hans's 
rise in strength, not rating in strength, sudden jumping from a 2500 player of play immediately up to a 2650 plus level of play, uh, which might indicate unnatural growth, or did his strength follow a more natural progression? The data based on chess.com's strength score in Hans's games and events does not necessarily indicate a stepwise progression that you might see uh, if a player suddenly went from one level of strength to another. It's not like uh, saying, okay, he, he just went Super Saiyan at some point. We graphed his performance in events by strength score over time and compared it to his peers uh, in uh, Appendix X.2. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Hans has played an unusually high number of near-perfect games. Uh, and here, also very interesting, there has been some analysis posted online suggesting Hans has played an uh, abnormally high number of perfect games. We have carefully analyzed many other presentations found online that claim to have found potential evidence of cheating. Uh, including uh, asserting that Hans has played more 100% games, uh, 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 etc. We have concluded that the methodology and the underlying tools used in those analyses do not meet our standard. You all know who they are talking about. Uh, therefore, chess.com gathered all of Hans's and other um, uh, related players' games from 2020 onward, played against 2,500 plus rated players, and removed any games we determined were lacking sufficient measurable observations uh, uh, based on our process of removing known book moves and some simple endgame moves, and then measured the percentage percentage of those games which were above 100 on our strength score. So based on this analysis, as she is shown in figure one, Hans actually has one of the lower percentages of near perfect games when compared to similar players. So there you have it. Um, if uh, you want to consider who plays the most perfect games, Hans is uh, b below the middle. Uh, here, there, there's like a comparison, Jordan Van Forest, Pragananda, uh, Jeffrey Sheung, then Hans Niemann, and all the way to the right, of course, uh, by, by far the, the, the biggest uh, uh, number of perfect games or near perfect games uh, is played by none other than, of course, Magnus Carlsen. Uh, followed, uh, uh, following Magnus are Nodribek Abdusatrov and Nihal Sarin. And then uh, the, the rest uh, would be Andrei Esipenko, Deak, uh, Arjun Erigaisi, Alireza Firuja, Vincent Keimer and, and Gukesh and so on. So, so Hans is nowhere near uh, any of them. Uh, in terms of uh, perfect play. In conclusion, while we cannot definitively prove that Hans's rise in strength is entirely natural, we have also found no indication in the game uh, data to suggest otherwise. Uh, well, uh, some have suggested that a move-by-move -move analysis by human may uh, surface some oddities in move choice or analysis. There is nothing in our statistical investigation to raise any red flags regarding Hans's over-the-board play and rise. And the uh, rest of it is um, uh, pretty much... Uh, uh, the, the Simcoe Cup, okay, uh, in, in the game against Magnus Carlsen. Finally, the game between Hans and Magnus at the Simcoe Cup does on its own merit analysis as its results, circumstances, and explanations are unique and have become the object of immense public debate and controversy. Hans beat Magnus in a classical game with the black pieces breaking Magnus' 53-game unbeaten streak and becoming one of the only five players in the past five years to beat Magnus while he was playing with the white pieces. Uh, Hans explained that his success was not anything special and largely due to Magnus having played quite poorly and having miraculously prepared specifically for the opening that Magnus played. By some miracle, I had checked this today and it's like it's such a ridiculous miracle that I don't even remember why I checked it. Now, while that uh, in itself might sound like a weird story, uh, I mean, th there's nothing that uh, would, would suggest that it, it, it's, it's not true. Uh, I mean, at least to me. In fact, Magnus has only... Uh, played uh, four G3, uh, that's a move, twice previously, both before two, 2010, and the position after Hans castled on move four had never been seen in any of Magnus's games. Hans, in a later in, uh, interview, commented that Magnus had previously played the opening against Wesley So in the 2018 London Chess Classic, but there is no such game on record. Magnus did play G3 Nimzo against Wesley So in a rapid game in Kolkata uh, in 2019, but the move order and emerging position in that game had no similarities to the game against Hans. Hans's uh, 9C captors on D4 had only been played once previously in the June 2022 title Tuesday game between Erasmus Svane and Stelios Halkias. Uh, so uh, there you have it. Uh, in the post-game analysis on move 13, Hans's proposed, uh, Hans proposed the error uh, 13 queen 
queen h4 saying queen h4 might be a move here uh, this move loses the bishop on g5 without any obvious compensation or the or, or compensation or the follow-up uh, this moment among others led to criticism uh, from other top chess players who were surprised that a player who could outplay magnus so easily with the black pieces could then suggest uh, such a move in a game that he had just played after proposing uh, the move hans requested to see the engine evaluation saying what does it say uh, what does the engine say to confirm that this move uh, lacked a purpose uh, these this analysis uh, and dependence on the engine seem to be at odds with the level of preparation that hans claimed was at play in the game and the level of analysis needed to defeat the world champion so uh do what that uh, you know what you will we also measured that um, uh, for the first three games of the single hub uh, Hans played with a chess.com strength score of 97.17 after round three the event organizers in response to the cheating allegations added a 15 minute delay to the broadcast of a chess move for rounds four to nine Hans achieved a strength score of 86.31 uh, which is lower uh, but with uh, again with everything if you if you you know imagine a world where Hans did not actually cheat and uh, you know in the over the board game and uh, the entire world was tweeting at him you know uh, the every every big uh, uh you know uh, news portal w was sharing news about him cheating that would affect your concentration uh, at least a little bit regardless of of your you know me mental capacity so other uh, players also had some interesting changes in strength as measured by chess.com this can be attributed to any number of factors including the ensuing situation after magnus withdrew uh, different opponents um, uh, and so on in uh, our view no conclusions should be should be made from this data uh, but of course everyone will make uh, their own <laughs> conclusions uh, uh, so okay uh, is there anything else that we need to... so in conclusion after Hans beat Magnus and Magnus withdrew from the Seinfeld Cup we removed Hans from chess.com's upcoming uh, grand chess uh, sorry um, chess.com global championship uh, should be CGC no uh, and withdrew his access to the site until we could conduct further review and while Magnus's actions prompted us to reassess the situation Magnus did not talk us in advance um, about our our decisions uh, or ask for it or directly influence those decisions at all magnus was and is operating entirely under his own direction uh, as is chess.com however given the circumstances which included a player who had a significant and admitted history of cheating the world chess champion making the loudest statement in chess history and an invitational event starting in a matter of days we felt uh, we had to act we communicated privately with hans via email we never wanted to, uh, or intended to have a public discussion about these decisions and and frankly we believe we could have resolved things pri uh, more, more privately uh, we understand that the timing uh, of our email uh, and Hans publicizing of it may have led to a number of people in the chess community to believe that chess.com knew Hans was cheating over the board or was under pressure from Magnus or had some new evidence indicating that Hans was cheating over the board the much less interesting truth uh, is that none of this is true while there are many remarkable signals and unusual patterns in Hans, uh, Hans's path as a player, and while some game's behaviors and actions are hard to understand, chess.com is unaware of any concrete evidence proving that Hans is cheating over the board or has ever cheated over the board. Chess.com has historically not been involved in over the board or classical chess fair play decisions, as we do not run over the board or classical chess events. Uh, our investigation has revealed that while there uh, has been some noteworthy online play that has caught our attention as suspicious since August uh, uh, 2020, we are unaware of any evidence that Hans has engaged in online cheating since then. Our investigation has concluded that he did, however, cheat much more than he has publicly admitted, including in many prized events, at least 25 streamed games and 100 plus rated games on chess.com as recently as when he was 17 years old. We believe Hans is an incredibly strong player and a talented individual that said uh, given uh, his history on our site we did not believe we could ensure that he would play fairly in our online events until we could reevaluate the evidence and our protocols nevertheless uh, and to be clear uh, it is not our position that Hans should be limited or banned from over the board chess Hans's online and over the board behaviors may be completely different and that should be taken into consideration we have shared our findings with FIDE and will co uh, cooperate with any investigation or request they pursue 
Uh, it is our belief that over the board event organizers should be taking much stronger precautions against cheating by all players uh, to ensure fair play to keep the game fair all players should be playing under the same conditions and checked before during and after the matches uh, using the appropriate technologies and methods to counter any outside assistance we reiterate our message of september 8 2022 that we would like to have a conversation with hans to provide an explanation and response with the hope of finding a resolution where hans can again participate on chess.com we want the best for Hans, we want the best for Magnus, we want the best for chess. We want stability, fairness and joy in the chess community, not turbulence, com conspiracy and accusations. We have a role to play in this and we acknowledge that we can do better in our transparency, timing and messaging moving forward uh, and look forward to cooperating with FIDE and others in the chess community to serve the game. Uh, Eric, Danny and the Fair Play team and chess.com. And okay, then you have uh, all of the evidence that was mentioned uh, uh, throughout these uh, 20 pages uh you, you can check it out i will put it in the description below it's quite quite extensive you can read pretty much everything uh, on, on your own uh but this is basically just uh, uh, uh evidence and everything in detail what we've just uh, uh gone through so that's basically it what they are saying is uh, that uh, hans yes did cheat online we all know that he cheated in more games than uh, he he admitted uh, uh i think pretty much we, we all knew, knew that as well uh, but that there is no indication that after 2020 uh, he cheated uh, anywhere and uh, well they, they have no indication whatsoever that uh, he, he cheated in any over the board game and especially in the game against Magnus Carlsen uh, and as you've seen there are many many more players uh, with uh, incredible uh, strength scores as they use that term on chess.com uh, you can see that Magnus is far far uh, above everyone else um, uh, so, so it's I mean it's not even close. Uh, what is interesting is uh, yeah, Hans's incredible ascent from from 2500 to 2700, or even from 24. I don't know uh, that uh, uh, that table we've shown where he uh, he, he has the absolute uh, ha a biggest progression uh, in modern chess history. I don't know why they use modern chess history. Uh, does anyone have a bigger progression? I, I think it's just because they they can't measure a progression of let's say Bobby Fischer or someone like that. Uh, but yeah, uh, there we have it. That's the Hans Niemann report, uh, chess.com's current research and findings from October 2022. What do you take from this? Uh, does this, uh, you know, uh, what what does this mean to you? I mean, uh, it, it really does not move my opinion. I, I stand by, you know, unless something is proven. I mean, there, there's no reason to believe he cheated over the board. Uh, but uh, I, I, as usual, I'm always interested in what you guys think because you always have such such great opinions, and uh, you know I, I love reading your comments. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, the the report. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I would like to wish a very happy birthday to Peter, and I would like to thank Tasu Tasuli, I love you, Ellen Bradbury, Elsie Grand, and Storm Seventy on Bandcamp for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions. Uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.